we've had great wild pollination services, but there were sort of three things that started to make me worry about that. The first one was varroa mite, the second one is habitat loss, and then the last one is fire. And if I never find out what it's like to lose the wild pollinators, that would be just great. But if I do, I've got an insurance policy. Just inland of the Queensland seaside town of Yapoon is a tropical paradise. Fruit trees as far as the eye can see. Owned by the Groves family since the 1960s, this once pineapple farm now plays host to a variety of tropical fruit. They've tried lots of different rare fruits over the years and we've sort of found the ones that work for us and stuck with them. And, and that's mangoes, lychees, avos? Yeah, but also smaller crops like uh, star fruit and, and locusts and jackfruit and dragon fruit and, and things like that. David um, Groves is third generation on farm and while he loves his fruit, there's something else that has captivated his imagination and farming sensibilities. The humble and very small Australian native stingless bees are now some of the hardest workers across their 200 hectares. This one here is full and I just got another empty box. These are beautiful handmade things from down in southeast Queensland and um, I'd like to have another one so I'm going to split it in half. Do you do that two. here? Yeah, empty boxes on the table down there. We can go and do it now if you oh, like. Okay, love that. An expert in Australian native bees, Dr Tim Hurd, says stingless bees are very adaptable, taking advantage of whatever plant is around, native or introduced. Honeybees are excellent pollinators. Native stingless bees are excellent pollinators too. Uh, solitary wild bees are also excellent pollinators of many plants, so we need them all. We need diversity. We know that's one of the messages that's coming through in a lot of pollination research these days is it's not about how many visits you get to flowers, it's about the diversity of insects that are visiting those flowers. So if you've got a lot of diversity out there on your farm, uh, a lot of different types of bees and other insects too, then it's much more likely that you will have a better pollination result. They are quite easy to keep. You do need to learn some skills to keep them. You can mess it up pretty badly if you don't know what you're doing, but it's not difficult. It's not brain surgery. An average person can learn to keep these bees with a bit of dedication, a bit of reading, a bit of study, and a lot of practice. Although the bees don't sting, they do bite. And after spraying plenty of bug spray on David's advice, he showed me how to split a hive. You said it's full. What does that mean? How, how full is full? And what's it full of? OK, so there's three layers. The bottom two are where the eggs and the food are, and then the top one, if you allow it to, will be just food, no eggs, and that's if you want to harvest honey. So I'll do this nice and slowly, and then we're going to move up here and get it open, and now we're about to see what's going on inside. Whoa, whoa. Oh, and that is perfect. Wow. So. It's so different to a honey bee hive, yeah. right? Yep. So they're a lot smaller. You can only expect to get a half a kilo or a kilo of honey a year, as opposed to 50 for a European bee. But they don't sting. You're going to have a lot more hives per hectare, and they're better pollinators for small flowers. Is that right? Yeah, they can get into small spaces. So, yeah. hmm. so we're going to put the new empty half on top of the old full half, and. Um, let them do their Just thing. Let them heal. They'll take a little bit of little bit of repair, a little bit of time. But all things being equal, they should recover pretty quickly. And that works for David and the farm. One example is starfruit and their tiny flowers. With fruit trees not flowering all year, the groves are lucky to have plenty of gums, wattle, and native plants flowering within the bee's flight range. But the family also plant flowers on the end of rows and windbreaks. What's the benefit of the native bees rather than the honey bees? They have a much smaller flight radius, so you, depending on where you place them on the farm, you can be guaranteed that they're not leaving the property and not subject to any neighbouring chemical issues or just pollinating trees next door that you don't need done. And what about the fact that they don't get varroa mite? That's a huge benefit. Um, it's still to be seen whether the varroa mite might spread some viruses that affect them through the honeybee population that then gets into these, but they don't directly affect them. So that's um, something I won't have to worry about. What made you get serious? Um, 
fear. <laughs> so, you know, even then they were talking about varroa mite coming and wiping out the feral apis colonies. So any, you know, feral European honeybees were likely to disappear one day. And we've always relied on natural pollination services. Farms one third virgin bush and then a lot of neighbouring land is too. But if anything were to happen to that, say another 2019 style fire or more clearing next door, then that could start to cause us dramas. Dr Tim Hurd agrees and says that's one of the reasons we need diversity in our pollinators. Varroa mite is a specialist parasite on honeybees. Its whole life cycle, its size, its behaviour is very much tuned in to the nesting biology of honeybees. So they can't possibly affect our native stingless bees. We're pretty confident of that because they co-occur in Asia. So the varroa mite comes from the Asian honeybee. In Asia, there's many species of native stingless bees as well, different from the ones in Australia, but very closely related. And they never get attacked by the varroa mite. Stingless bees may be safe against varroa mite, but they do come with their own issues. We do have a disease called Shanks brood disease on stingless bees. Uh, so that's a bacterial disease. We have a lot of pests of stingless bees as well. Most of them are not particularly virulent diseases or uh, insect pests or parasites of stingless bees. But if hives are weakened or they're not kept well, if the beekeeper is not looking after them effectively, then they can wipe out native bee hives. I think we've tormented these poor little girls enough. Do you want me to help you with this one? Yeah, if you carry that one and I'll carry After this David one. split the beehive. No. Oh, there's one in my ear. And then told me that I would now Put smell like bee want. death to the returning bees, we put the hives back in place. So I've got the original top half and it's got most of the bees in it. So this is the one that That's needs to go here. Half, so we're going to put it right where it used to be yep. and try and get as many of those workers back into this, this box, which yep. is a little bit short. And I'm going to put the top box right on top. Any workers that leave here will probably get confused and go back into the other half, Brilliant. which is the one that needs more help. So yep. that'll help to balance the numbers a little bit. David has acknowledged keeping Australian native stingless bees has turned into somewhat of an obsession, albeit a healthy, productive and self-sustaining one. I've got 35 in boxes now, or 36 since we split that other one, and another 24-ish logs rescued from around the place. And then there's two or three dozen trees in the bush that I know about in, on our place that can just stay there. And I'm trying to bud some new hives off of those as well. And do your native bees pollinate enough or do you need more? Oh, look, we've got great pollination already. This is my insurance policy and it doesn't hurt to have more. So we'll find the limits of the carrying capacity of this farm for bees. And even then I might start fostering some out onto uh, houses in town, friends, family, that sort of thing. Is it a viable solution for all fruit farmers worried about varroa mite? No. Sorry, um, they only work where it's warm enough. So if you go south of Sydney, this just isn't an option. In the tropics, where it's warm enough, definitely. This is 100% could replace honeybees, provided you're worried about pollination and not honey, because we're only talking a couple of percent of the honey per hive per year. 